Hey everyone, welcome to Home Entertainment Lab. Today I'm going to be doing a little intro here to the channel. Uh, kind of giving you guys an insight of one of our, you know, what we're about and uh, what you're going to see on this channel. So I figured the first thing, it's kind of the one of the focal points of our house, um, is our home theater. And uh, so this channel, I'll be going over um, some DIY projects. Um, different parts of the home that we use for entertaining and spending time together. Um, you know, with this pandemic and stuff, it, it's made a huge difference in how we spend our time. Um, made people more of a homebody. So anyway, this is our home theater. And kind of see here, a little bit of info. It is roughly about 19 feet front to back and about 14 and a half feet wide. Um, don't mind, we don't have the greatest seats in here yet or anything like that. Um, we bought those from Nebraska Furniture Mart. I'll get into that here in a little bit. So we'll start out here and front and center and we'll work our way around the room into different things. And I really want to pinpoint, uh, some of the things I like about some of the things we did and a few of the things that would change in the future. We do another theater or, you know, just as time goes on, swapping gear and equipment out, um, and whatnot. But so to start out, we got a 120 inch dragonfly screen. Um, it's not bad. I think in the future, I would definitely go for a frameless screen instead of having the black, uh, what do you want to call it, velvet um, frame on there. And uh, but it serves its purpose uh, for sure. Um, it's not too bad. It definitely, I would really recommend if you put one of those up, have two people. Um, that size, it, uh, definitely gets, not that it's really heavy, it's just wobbly. Um, so our LCR left front and center, um, or, or, yeah, left center and right here, sorry about that, is, uh, all Rebel, all, in fact, all the speakers besides the subwoofer in here is going to be Rebel. Um, the floor standing and center channel are going to be the Performa 3 series. We did for the left and right channels are uh, going to be the 6-inch drivers in there. And the center channel is going to have an 8-inch driver. Uh, the reason we did that is, um, you know, a majority of your sound uh, is going to come, percentage-wise, is going to come from your, your center channel. So I think a lot of people... You know, they'll go heavier on their left and right, but they'll do a smaller, uh, lesser grade series center channel. And I just think that's totally wrong. Um, you know, everyone's got their opinion. That's just mine. You know, everything in here is opinionated. Um, and then uh, we did, prior, we had an SVS subwoofer. As you can tell, it's definitely not an SVS. We had a dual SVS uh, SB4000s. This is the monolith or I'm sorry, model price monolith, 15-inch uh, subwoofer, um, THX. It's got some, you know, some neat features. You can do THX only. Uh, it's set in the crossovers and whatnot and turn that off. And you literally just go based upon what's pre-made from the factory, uh, based upon THX recommendations. Um, it, it's decent. I would say it's not as high quality of a product as SVS. Uh, but it packs a punch for sure. Uh, I'm still debating if I'm going to buy a second. I'm definitely doesn't look sequential right now. Um, but I want to either get a second one of these or maybe sell this one um, and possibly get a uh, JTR captivator. We'll see. I'm not sure with size wise if that's really going to fit in here too well. We'll see. Um, bigger is not always better in this case. You know, I want something that, you know, I don't have decent space for my. Uh, left and right channels. Um, but anyway, so that's the subwoofers. Uh, originally, I'll, I'll get into this, the home builder, um, if you see over there, the coax and the outlet there, I'm not using that because I actually ran my own runs, um, cable runs through down the wall from the ceiling attic. Um, and we have a rack where all of our AV equipment's at. It's outside of the, the uh, theater room. And I'll get into that here in a little bit. So let's move on over here. We've got... Nice little bar area. Um, over here, I ended up taking out, there was a bottom there. Uh, it was meant to be for a microwave. And we already had the popcorn maker. I'm like, well, I think that's just more of a nostalgia thing in a theater. 
And I decided, when we talked to the wife, we decided it would definitely be a better idea to have that in here than having a, a, a microwave. Um, they are kind of hard to clean. If you don't have one, um, you know, I, I think they're neat to have. Uh, definitely gives that, you know, popcorn smell in here and whatnot. I think it just adds to that authenticity kind of a feel. Um, so that's what we were going for. Obviously, you can do more things in a microwave. But these are very hard to clean. I will say that. Um, I will leave, uh, if anyone's interested, just leave a comment. Let me know if you want to know the cleaner that we use. We get on Amazon. It's not cheap. But um, we use a spray cleaner. Uh, it works pretty good. So I built a little stand for that to raise it up when I cut out the plate uh, that the microwave was uh, supposed to sit in. It's got that light behind it. I don't really like where it's at. I think I'd like to do some tape lights, some LED tape lights below and over top and kind of highlight all that and be able to change colors. Um, it's got the sink. I don't know if I would really, if in our next home, I don't know or if we had built this one from a builder. I'm not sure I would have chosen to put a sink here. Um, or at least I won't in the future because I, I don't think it doesn't get used enough. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it, just kind of there. I, I don't really see us washing dishes or anything up here. I mean, occasionally it gets used or when we're cleaning, it's nice to, you know, clean a utensil off or something like that or, you know, a, a wash rag or something. But well, that doesn't get used a whole lot. Um, the paint in the room here. It's all black magic. Uh, it's a latex on the wall. It's flat. And then we used, uh, I want to say it's an oil base. Uh, the two, it's all Sherwin Williams black magic. And it's going to be uh, cashmere and emerald. They are not a cheap paint. I will say that. Um, I want to say the trim paint is $90 a gallon. And I think that's even with a little discount. Um, the wall paint, I think we're right around $50 a gallon for the wall paint. So it's not cheap, but we don't use a whole lot of it, especially on the cabinets. That paint goes a long ways. Um, but yeah, no, we like the color of it. Um, you know, the builder did a different color. We didn't like the person that designed it, uh, the colors that they went with and figured it would match kind of the color tones that we're going with in here in the theater. Um, down here, we've got a mini fridge. Um, something to note. Uh, if you're looking for one of these, is definitely get a fridge that has the ventilation in the front of it. You can see it's got the ventilation down there. Because if I, I've seen a few people and look at a cheaper fridge, or even some can be expensive, but they're not designed to be in a fully enclosed area like that, as there's not a lot of space behind there. And if the compressor is vented to the back, you're, you're going to have some problems and it's not going to last as long. Um, and so, yeah, that's something to... To know, definitely make sure that you're getting the proper product, if you can, um, to do that. This does have some lights up here um, for the temperature, and it's not that big of a deal. I just leave it on uh, so I can kind of monitor it, make sure, you know, I don't have any issues with temperature. Uh, we don't really stock it right now. We're in North Texas. You know, here in a little bit, we'll probably go ahead and start stocking up more as it gets colder. But we have an outdoor fridge and an outdoor kitchen, and we use that a lot um, during the summer. It's just more convenient, I think. Um, it does lock if you've got little kids like we do. We've got a soon-to-be teenager and a three-year-old. And there can be some hot items in there that they want to try to get some sodas and whatnot. So um, definitely, I, I would really recommend one with a lock. That's what largely drew us to this one. And it had a separate wine side that we kind of use for liquors and wine and stuff. And left side for, you know, other things. Sodas and beer and stuff. Anyway, um... So yeah, that's uh, the the lights. It, it's not that big of a deal in there. Um, you can turn them off. I just leave them on. But if the, it is dark in the room, it'll let off a little bit of uh, light. And you know, over here, it'll kind of shine off the speaker. But it's not that big of a deal. Um, it doesn't bug me that much. And uh, oh yeah, here, real quick, I'll go over. Um, I, I know that it looks a little goofy down there. Uh, all it is is I built a shelf for the center channel. Get it up off the ground. Um, it's not quite ear level um but it's definitely better than it was it's about 24 inches up off the ground and all i did was a piece of uh one by material um i want to say it's 16 inches wide it's a pretty big piece and that speaker is not light i didn't know a lot of people do the floating shells but there's an outlet back there and that's where i was going to put the subwoofers is you know left and right of the center channel and uh 
So I wanted to be able to hide the wires back there. And I was like, okay, that's an easy solution. And over top of that, I just got a piece of material that's actually a um, a curtain, a blackout curtain. So that, that was kind of an easy solution. I, I haven't kind of fixed it up and made it look all perfect and stuff yet, but I'll get there. Um, over here, we've got a bar. Um, this has been a nice addition. I haven't put any bar stools here or anything uh, yet. But I plan to. The idea of it is we like to actually eat in our theater. And it just seems like, you know, if you've got plates and stuff, you know, it's not hard for them to get spilled and stuff in the chairs. And it's, it's just not that friendly, I think, to try to eat in here. I like to eat in here. We like to have, you know, pizza night and stuff like that and watch a movie. Um, but so anyways, I did some LED lights up underneath. And... uh kind of show you i didn't paint up all up underneath there but so there you see i got the leds and uh got a power strip there I ended, I ended up adding that outlet right there i just you know cut it into the drywall fished it up there no big deal um uh, this is all one by material um uh, and i actually used a shelf bracket to support it over on this side and I didn't want to put all the pressure because I figured there might be some weight up here or people, you know, putting their elbows on here and stuff like that. Um, I didn't want to put that bracket strand on the drywall. Uh, it was so thin, I thought maybe it might tear it. And then I actually just took a two by four, ran it across into the studs and I, I put screws into the studs and then I just put it on top. Use a brad nailer, some wood filler and finished it up. Um, over here, those definitely are more of an aesthetic than they are to do anything for sound. If anything, it might give you some, you know, bouncy, you know, sound bouncing around in the room. But, um, so I did the Harmony, uh, system here. And I, I was a little iffy about it when we first did it. Because I was watching a lot of YouTube videos and reading reviews. A lot of people said it was hard to set up. I didn't find that it was hard to set up and to get the stuff, all of our equipment connected to it. The problem that I had was later on down the road, we actually, so right now we have an Epson. I'll get to that here in a second. We had, we used to have a Sony projector. And the problem was when we didn't have the Sony anymore, we went to the Epson. Trying to change it in the system was not simple. I, I Maybe I just forgot the steps. Um, but trying to change it to control the Epson projector from that, it was kind of difficult to change if i want to call it the scene uh you know you can create different scenes of what it does when you push the button and stuff um you know the the functions and so these here are just to hide the wire all that is is a kindle fire i can't remember which model it is it's a kindle and then i bought a wall mount system with it i was going to try to run the wires in behind here down and at least underneath the little bar top counter here um but there is actually uh some ventilation uh, i want to say it's an air return or air duct that runs in there and it's pretty tightly fit in. and there's a ton of insulation that actually fell down in there when they blew the insulation for this house and it was not easy to get anything in there there's so many two by fours two by sixes that frame that out back in there it is i, I couldn't get a fish to tape down there to save my life i had to cut that all open just to run 24 inches of cable. So that's the solution right now. I'm sure it'll change on the road. Um, we got the Ecobee, which that's kind of an odd thing. I don't like that they put, the builder put that in here. Um, there, if, yeah, if you can keep your theater controlled separately, I think that's great. But this is in the upstairs of our house. And like, okay, for instance, right now it's December. It, it's December in North Texas. So sometimes it's getting down into the 30s. Um, I've noticed that if we're having the projector on for a long period of time, kids are playing video games or watching movies, um, and it's warm in here. you got that projector that puts off a lot of heat, if you don't know. Um, well, it's pretty hot in here. So as the upstairs uh, gets cold, I mean, I want to say we've probably seen 15, 20 degree temperature differences in the bedrooms if that doesn't run for, you know, uh, six seven eight hours you know if kids are playing video games all day or have their friends over it can be a while so that's something that's our i just it, 
like I said, we didn't build this home. Um, somebody else designed it. If that's something I, I really think that builders specifically should pay attention to. And then the other thing is, I mean, we've got a, the light in there doesn't really put off any heat in that sconce, but if it did, I mean, that would make no sense to have it right next to a thermostat. So this is just overall not a very good design as, as to who did that. Um, I would just, wow, kudos to you. But anyway, uh, these sconce lights, they're nice. The placement of them, I think is kind of cool. Um, with the bar there, I guess it kind of throws it off, but it gives a little bit of light if you're on your phone or something like that. Um, but I think we are going to swap them out for some like stainless steel looking ones that are probably a little longer um, over on that side as well. We have one. Um, but yeah, so that's that. And uh, yeah, so eventually we're going to do some bar stools in here, probably some high back bar stools that got back support and stuff like that. You can turn sideways and watch TV and or, you know, watch whatever's on here and uh, eat your food. And then, so over here, um, these are the seats we have. They're from Nebraska Furniture Mart. Um, they're not the greatest thing. Let me kind of demonstrate why I'm going to say that. They the Functionality, they're, they're good. They function just fine. Uh, the leather is kind of noisy. Just use a little bit of saddle soap, and it kind of gets rid of that uh, every once in a while. Um, I personally like having leather instead of a cloth material or something else. Um, with the kids, I'm going to tell you, they're rough on this stuff. I mean, we probably have to take these up every month and make sure we vacuum with whatever's underneath them. But anyway, um, you know, they get stuff on here, drinks or whatever, and, and it's easy to clean up for sure. The one thing I cannot stand, let me point this out, is the gap. The gap in the back here is huge. And I mean, this, it gets huge. So when you push down the cushions and once they get broken in a little bit, people are sitting in them, they're softer. And oh my gosh, there's no lower back support in these chairs. And so I've been talking to the wife. I think we're going to go with um, a more traditional theater seating versus having the, this actual love seat and a couch. Um, you know, they, they saw all that USB and stuff. I think we're just going to do some plain um, theater seating in here. I've been seeing some different reviews and stuff. I see Valencia's got some gorgeous chairs, or I'm sorry, theater seats that we can put in here. So I think that's probably where we're going to go with. Um, the other thing that I don't really care for is this rounded riser that they built. I wish it was square. I, I think we just lose some functionality here as far as space. And I'll tell you what, I've there's been quite a few people that take a spill when it's dark in here. I think in part, just because instead of having like some stairs on one side, we have a rounded riser that's just tiered like that. Um, I think it looks gorgeous. I think it would be better if it was turned around. Maybe that was just by the screen, um, you know, and it kind of showcase your screen and your front, you know, your speakers and whatnot, but it's not what it's designed in here for. So I think it's just kind of, it throws things out of, out of retrospect there. Um, so like I said, we have the Epson projector. Um, I was actually taking the Sony projector that we had down one time to clean the filter, which I really didn't realize and I didn't want to read the manual or look at a video that you can change the, you can put a new filter in it or clean it with it up on the ceiling. Well, I dropped it down the ladder and like smashed the wall and destroyed the projector. So I replaced it with an Epson and I had an Epson before at our last house and it worked fine. It's no issues there. Uh, 4K projector, not sure. I remember the other one we had was, it was upscaling to 4K. Over here, we got a closet. Um, I, I will say behind that closet there and that all that is, it's an exterior wall. Um, this is probably one of the biggest complaints I have about this theater is um, if you're gonna build a home Make sure you have a space for your audio and video equipment. Uh, if you're someone that's going to be an enthusiast, but if you're doing an all-in-one box home theater system, you really don't got to worry about this. Uh, but I'm hugely into audio and video equipment. That gets hot. It's an exterior wall. We're in Texas. It gets to 105, 106, maybe a little bit higher during the summer. That is an exterior wall behind that. That sucker gets hot. I was thinking about running some AC Infinity uh, vent system through the ceiling there and out the attic, but there just wasn't any way to have all of our audio equipment in there in a nice orderly fashion. It was small. It's not very deep. There's just shelves in there. I had to cut holes in the shelves to properly run the wires and make it look nice. Um, so I just think that's not a great 
design. Home builders really don't think about that unless you're asking them to build something specifically, I guess. Um, so definitely that's what we're going to do in the future. Uh, I definitely like that all of this ceiling here is not squared off. So that's supposed to help with sound. Um, I would like to put some some uh, ceiling sound treatments in and whatnot. Um, so yeah, give me a, a rundown. We're running uh, 7.1.4 Dolby Atmos. These are all Revel speakers. Like I was saying before, the entire room's got Revels. We've got four, and so there's all kinds of stuff up here. We got the smoke detector. We've got the you know our left and right surrounds we got the rear surrounds back here um that's the other thing i they put those up so high I, I don't know why they're up there i would have liked them to be more on the wall at eye level um they kind of shoot down it's like okay well i guess i got a bunch of atmos speakers in a way um but yeah it's not too bad so the paint in here is all black magic paint from sherman williams uh like i said uh it's a latex on the wall and on the doors that is going to be that oil-based paint. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much our theater here. Still got some other little things. Like I said, we're going to add the add the uh, bar stools, change out the chairs, do the subwoofer. Um, you know, I, I think the screen's going to stay in this house. We'll see how long we're going to be here. And uh, I know our new house. We'll end up swapping out a bunch of stuff. Um, you know, th that's the other thing I'd like to mention. If you're planning on, if you're doing the theater and you're not going to be there long, keep in mind that when you sell your house... Um, the buyers, you know, sometimes they're going to want concessions and whatnot or to make the deal work. And they're going to try to, you know, our last theater, they wanted everything in the theater. And I was like, no, unless you want to tack, you know, 15 grand onto the theater. Um, you know, that's not happening at the time. That's roughly what we spent here. Um, let me go over our AV rack here. That's outside of our theater. And kind of give you guys another view of the theater from just out here what it looks like when you walk into it so we got the little stairs coming up i still got to finish some trim like i said i, I built out this there was a, a little closet for movies and i built it out and do a full av rack closet and so we've got the double entry doors comes up to that riser and over here we have a 42 u rack with up above i put the ac infinity blowing or uh, fan system and back in there if you can see it yeah there's i, I didn't really put a vent cover on there um but there is a uh ducting and it draws the air up and out now it's not going to work functionally until i put a door on here all that gray once i put a door on um it'll draw I'll, I'll leave a gap about a three inch gap at the bottom and it'll draw air from the bottom and pull it up through getting all the hot air out of the equipment and put it out there at the top of the room so we should be able to get some cooler air down at the bottom of the uh, game room here and so yeah anyways that's our theater and our equipment uh, if you got any questions or you got any recommendations or what we should do uh leave it down in the comments i appreciate you watching and here i'll see you guys here soon we're gonna do a quick rundown of our game room and some of the other space in the house but anyways thanks for checking us out and we'll talk to you later